I took all this out of this 1955 market. Incredible. Show you how it's done. Hello everybody, Richard Michael Owen here at Owen Automotive and today we're going to replace the craziest wiring harness I've ever seen in a vintage car. It's hiding back here in this baby blue 1955 Morgan. Really sweet looking car, love the color combo. Kind of done up the super sports, you can see the Webers in here. But this is the real offender, it's this over the top wiring harness that uh, it's just way over the top for a car so simple as this early Morgan. Yeah, you see lots of stuff going on, relays and a fuse block. You can see the way it wraps around here close to the firewall. And it's really overkill and it's too much for a car like this. So we're gonna replace this with a standard wiring harness from Auto Sparks. Let's see what the other side looks like. All right, we can have a look at the driver's side here. A lot more of the same way too much wiring and electronics none of this is original to the morgan and really it all should be replaced with a more original setup here you see like relay boxes going to inline fuses going to hot studs going to inline fuses going to relay boxes it's way over the top there's a lot going on here see the conduit running down the front of the firewall but the engine looks pretty good the original triumph unit here got an old aluke <clears throat> Sorry, got an old original Lucas sports car hiding in there. That's kind of a neat vintage piece. Yeah, that's really crazy. The reason why this car is in is because a lot of this dashboard doesn't actually function as it should. See an extra horn button here and all these extra switch gear, which doesn't look very nice, not in keeping with the car. So we're going to wire everything up to these original bake light switches as it should be. I have a light down here in the footwell. You can see what's hiding underneath the dash. Look at that mess of connectors and conduit all running back there as well. So first thing I do is disconnect the battery. It's hiding down in there. And we'll start to strip out this interior and really get access to the rest of the system and see what it looks like. Yeah, I pulled the interior out. It wasn't really fastened down, just kind of sitting in there. That's very typical of a Morgan. And here you can see the pieces of wood that actually make up the floorboards. I'm just gonna pull some out. All right, got those wood panels out. And as we can see, there's really not much to these Morgans. They're kind of just like a frame some angle iron and some wood. All these floor panels here are wood. I just peeled back the sill fabric and you can see in there, that's where the, one of the main conduits runs down. I think the fuel line's in there as well. And it kind of runs back here and goes off to the rear. So it'll be interesting to see how the fuel pump and all the rear lights are integrated. Yeah, I've definitely disconnected the battery first. That's the first step. So keep going, see what it looks like in behind here and what the fuel pump looks like. There you go. See it's threaded on both ends here. All right, just got that tire out, but I'm noticing there's twin tanks here. We got two fillers. So down here is a second fuel tank. I guess that's for longer voyages, but there's a bit of wiring mayhem in here. I think there's a fuel pump hiding down in there and some solenoid that switches between the tanks. See the filter there and look at all that, all those ground wires. What is that? Holy smokes. You see the wiring going here to the light. So, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here at the furthest most point at these rear tail lights and try to work the wiring harness back out through the front of the car. Okay, got my first few loop clamps free, getting an impression of what I'm up against. You can see a loop clamp way down there in the corner. There's no way to get in there. So it's a there's a possibility this wiring harness was on the car before the body was on the frame. Holy, you know, I'll have to get down in there cut it out. 
All right, just looking at the right rear lighting, the, all the wiring in behind here is insane. Look at this. So I think what happened is the initial system failed and somebody just patched in some wires, twiddled them together. Looks definitely like it's another person's job, but this is way overkill for these simple lights. So yeah, it's all coming out. All right, there's the wiring harness and the gimbal is just broke. But really I'm stuck with a handful of wire here going beside this auxiliary fuel tank. No way really to get into to the fuel pump or anything. If I look down in here, there's just no access to the fuel pump down there. So this aux tank's gonna come out and I don't know if it's gonna go back in because I think it's making the whole rear of the car quite low. So yeah, we're gonna take this tank out and we'll evaluate what it looks like after it's out. Yeah, just working underneath the car on the bumper bracket. Oh, look at this bolt I had to get out. The head was carved down. It was drilled out to accept the bumper bracket bolt. Pretty lame, but luckily I was able to get it out. Woohoo! Yeah, wow, this tank hasn't wanted to come out very easily at all. There's some really homemade bracketry holding it in. I think I finally busted it loose. Probably won't get fuel all over the floor. With the floor jack underneath it, it's full of fuel. Oh yeah, there we go. You know, I just want to make sure it's not tip. It's full of fuel. So. Okay, I think it's gonna come out. Just disconnected that wacky looking sender. Had to disconnect the bumper, the handbrake uh, levers. A lot to this to get it out. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. It was pain from my dad, I think. <laughs> oh man, that's it. Oh my god. Imagine how much that would. Uh, Effect how the car sits. Oh man, that's crazy. All right, I'm really happy with the progress. Got that tank out, and I think the rest is going to be pretty simple. So, yeah, I cleaned it all up back here. This is, looks like something now that I want to work on. Not really overly complex or anything like that. You can see the fuel pump arrangement? I think this is nice. It's elegant going from filter to pump, although I probably will remove this valve and just had used the top original tank. Moving around the inside here, I'm getting all the rear wiring harness out and now you can see what I'm up against here. Holy smokes, I gotta take all that conduit out and it leads all the way up to this dashboard mess. So yeah, dashboard's coming out. We'll have a look at what that looks like when it's out. Yeah, I can't believe I didn't notice this before. Look how tiny the nut is holding the steering wheel on. This nut is uh, meant to hold down trim, maybe something to do with the wipers, but nothing near strong enough to hold down a steering wheel. This is just a thin piece of brass, barely doing the job. So yeah, definitely gonna have to replace this. Yeah, one trick is if you have a stuck steering wheel, you can always put the nut back on and Tire light tap and see if that frees up the steering wheel. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna try my best to get this dashboard out. Let's see how this goes. It's coming forward. That's gonna be a bit of a struggle. Yeah, look what was hiding behind the dash. Wow, that's a lot of plugs. I see plug number 10, so we're at least looking at 10 plugs. It does look like these original switches were hooked up, so 
I uh, wonder why there's all these auxiliary switches below. I'm not gonna find out though. This is all just coming out. We're going back to standard, but yeah, that is a lot of wiring back there. Wow. Woohoo, making some progress. So here's all the terminals that went to the back of the dashboard. Way too many masking tape labels there. Not a fan of that. Looks really amateur when you do, when you leave a whole bunch of labels like that. Now the main conduit, it's massive. It's totally massive. Look at that. And unfortunately, the oil pressure line runs through there, so I gotta fetch that out. One thing I'll note, which is kind of cool, is that there's an oil pressure switch here, so you can either shut off the ignition or turn on a red light in the event that the oil pressure goes down. And there's also a wiper motor here where it doesn't belong, but I don't really have much of the original setup, so I might leave that in there for now. But yeah, making progress. Uh, soon we'll be able to tackle that firewall. Okay, before I dismantle this firewall area, I think we're gonna have to have a moment of silence for what has to be the most amazing wiring harness I've ever taken out of a car. All right, just gonna start cutting. That's it, no turning back now. It's happening, this is for real. Should be it. There it is, no turning back now. Okay, here it comes out. There she is, that's everything. All right, just before we go ahead and put the new wiring harness in the car, just wanted to spend a little time and have a look at some of the parts of this car that I really do like. For instance, this hot lead and the wires around the solenoid and the hard brake line going around it. It's little details like this that show a lot of care and heart and soul was put into this car. And I'm definitely gonna leave parts like this intact because they're done really well. Got a blank canvas here though. In fact, if you look at the car completely, it's really gutted. It's a really nice starting point for a project like this. The leaf springs on this car, really long. Look at this. From all the way here to all the way back there. Some of the biggest leaf springs in the business. Holy. Would you believe it? We're gonna replace all that wiring and conduit with just this. This is a brand new wiring harness from Auto Sparks out of England. And you can see why there's not much to it because the wiring diagram, these Morgans are really basic. There's not a lot to this. We don't need all that complication. One thing Auto Sparks did for us, which they'll do with any wiring harness, is they'll do an alternator modification and a cooling fan modification. So both those are built into the loom. Look how fantastic this is, the brown and white tracer. It's a thing of beauty, I love it. So I'm first gonna attach it to this dashboard. It's pretty simple. I think this might be the original dashboard. It definitely shows some age, um, but there's no numbers or markings on it anywhere. And I'll just cut to what this dashboard looked like when I first took it out of the car. A real mess. So I'm gonna try to attach this wiring harness in here and make it look all nice and neat. And I'll cut once I'm well along, trying to figure out all this switch gear and exactly where I wanna go. Can have some tea too. This is my first time setting up one of these signal controls. What's listed on the wiring diagram is a flasher unit. You can see all these hot wires coming in here down to these terminals. And this, this, this really just bridges the terminals pretty simply. But just to add a little more complication, it brings in a hot lead from the flasher that lights a little bulb in the middle for this red light. And you have to make sure you have your, all your ducks in a row. You have to have your gasket in there and you have to have it going through the dashboard. But Pretty simple, neat unit, but it looks like trouble if ever one of these was to break loose. In fact, I think I have to redo this one right here. It looks a little wayward. 
Look at this, making lots of progress. You can see the first thing I like to do is hook the wiring harness up to the dashboard. Love all the right colors of wires here and the tracers. It just makes it so much easier to work on in the future. If anything goes wrong now, the person knows where to go and what to change. It really makes it easy to repair. It's kind of like the art of repair. One thing I like to do is, saw, is take out these modern bulb holders that all the sparks fit and just solder in the original type. You can see the 50s type original ones here. They just fit better. And actually I find that the LED conversion lights actually work better in the original holders for whatever reason. There's a pink wire in here and that controls the auxiliary fan wiring that's put into the harness. That's a custom thing that we did. Yeah, but looking really lovely. I'm gonna throw this thing in the car now. You gotta put all this through the firewall. That's the one downside of hooking everything up to the dashboard. Like more like a morgue. Okay, just pulled that spaghetti of wire through the firewall and Auto Sparks put a grommet on the loom. Isn't that handy? Didn't need to feed that on. And this is where the main electrical system is going to sit on the firewall. And there's going to be a number of things deleted. Usually, you see this a regulator like this because it's a generator, but this is an alternator car, so that's gone. And there's not even any wiring for it. And the control box is gone too, that you'll see on a lot of. The, a lot of vintage Morgans that'll control just the rear lights. And instead, this is a later wiring loom that has separate flashers. So it's gonna be really simple, just a fuse block and a flasher unit. I'll get this all buttoned up and fastened down and we'll have a look at what all that looks like. Okay, I have a great opportunity to show off how British wiring works with these bullets and these connector sleeves. They're pretty simple and they can be pretty reliable as long as you get it right. One thing I really like to do is put some dielectric grease on the bullets. This will stop corrosion and really prevent that corrosion and keep the connection going a lot longer. So whenever possible, just get some dielectric grease on the bullets like this. I've got a connector sleeve. This will be a single sleeve. Kind of just push it in a little bit. Then I have this tool here. that will let you finish the job. There we go. And the other side here. There we are. Now, when it's done, just tug on it, make sure nothing falls apart. And there you go. That's one solid connection with dielectric grease that's gonna last a long time. Another thing I'll just notice from Auto Sparks, you can get this kit. It's part number 103, 113. It has all the connector sleeves and all the different gauge bullets. And you're off to the races when you have something like this. Got these components in, pretty simple stuff two fuse fuse box and a flasher system with this in place now i'm able to control the distance the dashboard can pull away from the firewall and this is really nice because now the dashboard will be able to be taken out and serviced like this without having to change the wiring whatsoever you can see this pink cable here that's for the cooling fan switch if you want to include one this is all pretty simple. We've seen that on the bench. But one thing I did notice is that these ground wires, if you tighten this up, have a tendency to get pretty close to these hot bulbs. So definitely something to watch out for. All the wiring's still loose in the car here. And this is the way I like to have it until it's all kind of working and somewhat in place. Then after it's all working, really attach it to the body. I have a light here just to show this rear license plate light. I put an inline fuse in here because these are known to cause dead shorts and that would melt the whole harness because it's on a red wire, not a green fused wire. So really important there. Really like to see that fuse. And last thing I'll notice these grounds. You want your grounds good. You want to ground all the paint down to bare metal, put some grease in there and make sure the grounds are good. Really important, especially on things like the fuel pump. So you're going to get that dashboard in and we'll see how the lights work. Okay, hopefully this is going in for the final time. We're always tight right in this corner. This. There it is. Awesome. All right, got that dashboard in, kind of leveled the gauges, didn't like seeing them all crooked. But let's see if these lights work. 
Around the ignition switch is this headlight unit. It's similar to a bug eyed Sprite where you could put on just the side lights or the headlights. All right, let's try the high beams out. The dip switch is a firewall mounted foot actuated unit. And there goes on the light there on the dashboard. Sweet. If we put all the ignition, we can try these blinkers out. Sweet. I think everything's working. Okay, with everything seemingly looking good, I'm allowed to hide the wiring harness in the car. You can kind of see the way it runs there. Definitely have some upholstery work ahead of me. Got to get the glue gun out. We have this green line I had to run. It goes to the back here to the fuel pump. And uh, this arrangement is a little different because the TR2, TR3 normally has a mechanical pump. So that wasn't included in the harness. But you can see here, really tried to hide the wiring harness as best I can so you don't see it around the spare tire area. And I think that's going to do a good job. So the last thing I got to do with this Morgan is hook up the cooling fan relay. I'm going to use this Hella unit here. And it'll plug in down here with all these sleeve connectors. And these sleeve connectors are nice because you can control basically the the way the relay acts from multiple points and you can use multiple power sources. So I'm, this sleeve connector idea, I really like it. So I'll get this hooked up, test it out, then we can start the car. Well, I think we're about done. I secured the relay in here, the fan relay, and ensured that it worked. It's kind of dark down there, but this is accessible, so if somebody needs to get in here, they can deal with it. And the lighting's just below it as well. The way the fan works is it's controlled by this switch here and that just bridges the ground for the relay and starts the fan going and that's all functional so we know that the, mo the motor is going to be safe no matter what while it gets tuned or whatever really loving this area really organized really clean really neat that's the kind of thing you like to see this is the kind of thing that if there's ever a problem you can get to this area repair things and there's no questions this is all very simple just going into the interior look at this bright cream interior it's nearly impossible to keep clean but doesn't it just look lovely it kind of matches the gauges here which have also been redone and they just look totally amazing see the switch gear here all this now working and functional there's a hole here i'm going to order a new choke cable so we'll put a new choke cable right through the dash that'll be lovely and the new steering wheels on the way too but yeah it's really looking lovely inside the interior of this morgan all right, time for the test drive. But before we do that, I just want to talk about this motor. We did not build it. We don't really know what's inside of it. For instance, we don't know what jets are in the carbs and if they're appropriate for the two liter Triumph motor. But we did our due diligence. We tested the timing, the points and condenser, and it all looks really good. So we're giving it its best shot. Let's see how this thing sounds. Alright, well that wraps up this video. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll just finish by noting that we kind of live in a disposable car culture and repairing something like this to last the ages is super satisfying and I think a real sustainable way forward, even if it's using gasoline. And I think later on this year, after we finish this car, we'll get a new steering wheel in it and that choke cable. We'll be putting it on the market, so anybody that's interested in this, Morgan, please just contact me at the shop. Our website address is ownauto.ca. I'd love to hear from you. And that's it. That wraps up this video. So thanks for watching, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.